round three. Fight! Wow. Yes. Hello, everyone. We're back from lunch. <clears throat> Energized. We're ready to go. How was lunch, Martin? Fantastic. I already forgotten it because I think I have a great idea. And I'm excited about this because this is the kind of ideas I have to do to make this machine work. So I just realized because what we're going to work on in this stream is the gear train. Let me see if I can find here. So this morning stream, we made this gear train with uh, parametric functions and I'm going to go deep into that. And I think I have an idea that removes this whole shaft and this whole gear. And it's about the loop machine. So the question, my idea from the beginning, the speed of this drum on the Mar Machine 3, I always knew it would be one to eight from the crank, so eight times slower than the crank, or one to sixteenth, which would be one six, 16 times slower than the crank. And this will result in different loop lengths. So eight sound like this. Loop. Like one, two, three, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, actually, loop. That's eight. I counted wrong. And 16 is the first one I sang. And normally in my head, I was like, more opportunities, more musicality, longer drum pattern. I want a 16th, right? But the faster the drum spins, the tighter the drums um, will play. And if we do this, the shorter loop, one to eight gear ratio, um, the loop machine on Mar Machine X will play eight times tighter than the marbles played on Marble Machine X. And as you can hear, the, the marbles on the Marble Machine X played really tight. So if we can do an eight times tighter timing on the loop machine, that's What's fantastic. Left them? <laughs> Can't be any tighter. It's just, it, it just is. Exactly. It's just <laughs> tight. <laughs> and if you marry this idea with the fact that you can exclude a lot of parts, because we were looking at the spacing of everything. So basically, this is the loop machine gear. This is the loop machine shaft. And right now I'm thinking I'm going to sacrifice the loop length and put the loop machine on this already existing shaft with this big gear here, which just like saves space, saves parts, it simplifies everything. So yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy because these are the kind of decisions that I never, the trade-offs that I never been able to make. And these are the necessary trade-offs to make Marble Machine 3 work. So coffee cheers and let's do it. Coffee <laughs> cheers. Coffee cheers. Hope everyone is great. We're so happy to have your company. We already have uh, David Furniture from Morning from Maine. We have Thomas Dodde. Hi from France. We have Jamie Prieto. Morning from Chile. Andrew Smith. Early morning from New Zealand. Wow. So people are joining in from all around the world. Welcome, everyone. We love having you here. Hopefully, we can keep you like a cozy company today, perhaps. Have us in the background while we chat. And Martin solves all the problems with the marble machine, right? I think this is... Um, so if we head over to my, my, my gear train calculations here, um, the gear ratios, the thing is that the first gear is already 1 to 8 uh, in the crank to prog wheel old uh, program, which means that we kind of have that for free. We have that gear ratio for free. So why not just put the loop machine on that shaft? So what happens when we exclude a gear is now the loop machine is going to turn in the opposite direction. So that is my only little question mark now. And... Maybe Hannes mm -hmm. 3000. Mm -hmm. I wanted to put some spokes in these gears, and now I realize that I can also put some arrows, maybe. So, because in my new playing position, I'm standing on the other side of the machine. We have mirrored the whole design because of ergonomics and the bass guitar playing. This means that I'm cranking the machine in the opposite direction. So everything is mirrored. So let's start with putting some 
arrows in in the crankshaft assembly here. Um, because sometimes I just forget which direction gears are spinning in and that's not really good. <coughs> so let's make a sketch. König der Wald. Hi guys, I still believe, I hope you're having fun. And I can only speak for myself, but this is a ton of fun. Like these are our work day work days now. We combine like videos and working at the same time with these streams. I absolutely love it. Same here. It's it's been the holy grail to kind of like share this process while making progress. And we had so much like seriously wonderful outside the the chat only in two days the chat has already like affected the design uh, a lot so i'm also like learning yesterday we made helical gears from uh, and it was much easier because we had a great tip from from chat so i think the real cool thing i mean the general public will not understand this until they see a working marble machine 3 like bruce springsteen says it's called show business we show we don't tell but everyone who are like here right now all of you are like tuning into this stream you, I think, will already see, hopefully, that we can be efficient. And talking about efficient, I shouldn't blab so much if I'm going to be efficient. Let's project this line. I have to think now. I'm going to make a sketch. Now I think we can hide this sketch. I'm going to make a sideways sketch built. I have to think about parametric stuff here built on yeah this this is good so let's make some nice looking gear spokes mm -hmm. so let's do 50 actually on this small little gear hmm i want to make a parametric arrow or maybe i shouldn't Oh, I can make this parametric by using the midpoint here. Okay, so let's not do it like this. I want to put a line here that is... Huh. Oh yeah, if I do that and then I say that you are vertical with this point. Mm, like that. And you... So I think this could be... This is the typical... Yeah, I'm, I'm just repeating myself. But these are the typical decisions that I did not accept. These are the trade-offs that I did not... Ac I'm using the wrong constraint. These are the trade-offs that I did not accept on Marble Machine X. And so, I so here we are, making progress already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I have to like try to learn to really love these trade-offs. Offset, how thick is our parametric arrow? It's going to be 10. Offset minus five, boom. going to be so pretty our parametric arrow parametric arrow yeah I, I'm I'm saying I hope if I change the gear the arrow will follow yeah this oh. is what I'm hoping the way I catted it now with the constraints that I'm using this is what I'm uh, this is what I'm hoping for Let's do this. Um, oh, these lines should not go all the way out. 
we do this. I don't want to cut the outside of the gear off. There's an arrow. Eight. If you click long, if you try to select two lines, I have two lines next to each other here. You should generally try to avoid that, but I'm just doing that. And if you click and hold, you get a little like thing. So then you can choose which of the lines you want to select. The arrow is still blue, so maybe it's not super parametric, but never mind. Creative City is says the loop program isn't fixed at eight bars as you can edit it to 16, 32, 64 with the main wheel. Exactly. Oh. And with the muting levers as well. Mm. So since I want to have every drumstick, we can alter it a lot already. And you're Skating where the puck is going. Red ski here. <laughs> uh, because. So where. Oh, I hit the ball. Where. Here's our gear. Um, that was actually what tipped me over the edge. What pushed me over the edge. I guess it's called. Um, then I realized I can, I can do a lot. So. Let's cut this arrow out. And again, like when I when I cut this out, like think like how long do I want to cut this? Should I just drag it out? No. You should choose like because you want it to always follow if you change the gear thickness. So you cut to an object. So distance, uh sorry, start uh extent type to object, and I'm just choosing the surface. So if I make the gear thicker, the cut will always go to the surface, regardless of how thick it is. I want to cut through, so symmetrical. Well, not super beautiful. You know what? Should we just mirror this? Mm -mm -mm. I'm just going to make a circular pattern of this cut feature. So I'm choosing the cut feature. And I'm choosing this axis. Ooh, that oh, looks, there we go. That looks kind of cool. So that will just help us not making stupid mistakes since everything is mirrored. I'm a little bit like I can take for granted some spinning direction and that would not be good. Okay, let's go, go to the main assembly. So what we need to find out here is if the loop machine, I'm going to repeat this also for um, this second gear because we need to just make sure that the loop machine can spin this direction because by omitting this whole gear, um, as I said, I'm changing direction. So let's go to compound design. I have 100 tabs here. And on this one, I think I'm actually going to make proper proper gears, uh, um, spokes. Project this line, hide the master sketch, boom. The reason else I want to make some spokes now is that so we can like see through 
Oh, I didn't follow my own advice here. When you want two circles to be concentric, I prefer to make a circle non-concentric and then use the concentric constraints rather than putting them on the same dot because you never know which dot you are referencing. 200. And now I'm not going to make my old mistake. Now I'm going to just cut out. Instead of making the the spokes, I'm going to make the holes between the spokes. So let's start with a center line. And this one is also actually not needed then. I'm thinking correctly. No, we don't need this even. Are you excited for the spokes, Hannes 3000? As a spokesperson? <laughs> no, I couldn't get a joke out of that. Of course I'm excited. I thought it was kind of brilliant. I need my thinking oil right here to uh, get my mind going here after lunch. I don't uh, or, fall into a little nap here. For living in a, in like a completely like coffee deranged country i never heard the term thinking oil until you <laughs> you used it today so so i'm cutting the um 30 so check this out. I'm going to try to add as few lines manual as I can, and then I'm going to automate like the rest of the design, hopefully. So this curve, I'm going to say, is equal um, radius as that curve. Um, this one I have to define. And that should actually be offset from this. And this comes from a parameter. So if I have my thinking clearly, I should go gear. This is a, the parameters that we've been working with. And this is gear 1B pitch diameter. And then divided by 2 because we're doing the radius. And then I put that in a parenthesis. And then I make the offset from the edge. If I'm right about this, I'm going to be happy. Minus 20. By minus 20. Yes. There we go. There we go. Magic right? is still working. <laughs> Even after lunch, magic is still going strong here. So like this line, I always want it to be a certain position from the edge. And the edge is going to be designed by this, um, um, this global parameter. So what I did here, the like little equation is, is um, I love that stuff in CAD. So I'm only putting in... The only value I'm adding is how far away from the edge I want it. Yeah. Um, like and the value you add, Martin, is huge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Here's a tricky thing. Uh, this angle I should be able to calculate as well. Times five. Hmm. No, I don't think I will be able to do it. FL3 UV3 put offset in param parameter, smiley. No, I, I don't want that yet because mm -hmm. that's not a standard. Um, that's not like a standard um, thing. So why is this still blue? Oh, it's this one. So how do I actually know? And of course, it needs to point towards the center. Um, so I'm just going to do a helpline here, like this. I'm going to say that U and U are collinear. And then 
my math is not helping me here now. So 360, oh, maybe we can do it like this. 360 degrees divided on five. And 72. 72 and divide this number with two. Okay. Is that some voodoo if this works? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to mirror this over our little line. Mirror like this. Boom. And then we're going to circle our pattern this. With five instances. And if we have done this correctly, we have the minimal like possible inputs to make like... We're going to see if this works. Circular pattern around this axis. Okay, my, okay, I didn't calculate for the spoke. I calculated correctly, as you can see, but we also want some width of the spokes. So let's see if my design is parametric here. By reducing the degrees here, um, I should be able to put in, so we were on 36, let's try 30. And then we get the spokes. Oh, oh! That's that's a little neat, isn't it? Wow! Thank you, Thanos three thousand. But actually, I wanted the spokes to be parallel. Huh? Yeah. So this line should not at all aim towards the center. It should aim. So if I put the width of the spokes here, say we want them to be 70, this help line should be, this line should be tangential to that circle I just made. And then maybe, hmm, let's see if this works. No, uh, yes, but no. Let's first of all, Remove this degrees. Oh, it went, yeah, it worked, but it went to the wrong side. Mm. So we need a helpline again. Mm. This has to be collinear. And I want you to be tangential you come on fusion don't let me down back to 36 perhaps or 34 also we could actually use 36 that's not the problem here we go oh magic back on track this was is still not tangential. It didn't take that. Now. And now I think I have the spoke width inside here. Check this out. 50. Haha. -ha. Oh, cool. Okay. This was so, so strictly not necessary, but fun. Let's cut it out of the wheel. I also have to uh, add the arrow. I have to double check which side. Boom, 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 boom. And again, uh, we're not putting a distance. We're thinking first. We're thinking, what do we want this cut to do? Yeah, we want to cut it to the surface. So we're choosing the surface instead of a distance. And we're started in the middle, which means that we have to just do a symmetrical cut. And then it cuts through this piece, regardless <laughs> of how thick it is. <laughs> yes! And I have my eternal support next to me, adding the energy needed. Hmm. And the pep talk always there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this will spin... If I, if I spin it counterclockwise, this will spin clockwise. So let me add that to the sketch. Uh, a little clockwise arrow. Hmm. 
Don't let me down. Oh, we have only seen the first Beatles documentary episode, me and Hannes. Yeah. What a gold mine of <laughs> of inspiration that was. <laughs> right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Need to complete it. I'm gonna copy this function. So look, now I'm gonna make this arrow parametric with a function here, Hannes. Are you ready for this? Oh, I am ready. So I'm gonna paste this function, but instead of 80, I want it to be like three centimeters from the edge. Yes. Oh, do, 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 do. And then we're gonna offset this. So the arrow is 15 millimeter thick. And this arrow will, will be parametric. So let's just say that you are uh, vertical. Why is it still blue? Hmm. Want a black line, right? I want a black line, and I don't really understand why. If you are collinear with you, oh yeah, because I could have, I could have taken it all the way around the circle and gone down here. That's why. It had two places to be, and then it's not black anymore. And then just a little arrow here. Boom. Sometimes it's not strictly necessary to make it clean, but... I think we have a lot of people in chat who likes to make things clean. So I, th I think I'm forgiven if I'm a little bit excessively clean because they've seen me being excessively uh, <laughs> unclean. For a couple of years. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Let's just tell this line to be collinear with this line. I see chat here talking about... Um... The circle you added is not concentric. He didn't make the new circle in the middle to be concentric. Oh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I did it like that. Okay, yeah. Uh, I didn't follow my own advice. Well, S-A-R-Q-F. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, it's, it's, it tells me that it's over constraints. I will not redo it now. It's like... Probably in the middle. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now. So actually, it feels like Fusion is already struggling a little bit with this design. It's too many patterns, like mirror plus circular and Fusion is just, uh, I don't want to be here. I'm going to leave it like this for now. Just stay away from rectangles. <laughs> yes. Hannes is referencing my my flaming hatred <laughs> <laughs> for rectangular. Um... And then another like beginner thing. Let me show you the timeline. Now you think I already cut this. So let me cut out the arrow and you make another cut operation. No, 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 no. Go down to your timeline and redo the cut operation you already did, but just include the arrow this time. Oh. That way, um, you you have a cleaner timeline. There we go. We all strive for that clean timeline. Yeah. And now it's so funny because I, I did want to copy the arrow um, like we did on the other one to have it all the way around. And... Yeah, I can still do it, actually. Um, I'm going to repeat this cut operation around this axis. And if I just do it five times, things are going to be okay. And then we have five arrows. Wow, there we go. Oh, no. Now we have this again. Let's head over to the main assembly. Let's update here. Yeah, I have to save this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
I mean, good enough for retro wave. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we need, yes. right? Yes. Martin Moline retro wave. It's too many. It's too much. Things are happening in my songs anyway. I need. To, <laughs> it's like you need some constraints in your songs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's <laughs> like perhaps I should design this m- machine to like hold me back from too much, like all of being all over the place. Yeah. It's called a loop machine, isn't it? Yeah, not a drum machine. Exactly. Now we can update this. And now you can see that the arrows are correct. This spins that way and this spins that way. And so now I have to think. Because this direction of the loop machine is honestly not my favorite direction. So let's head over to this model and talk about it. Uh, Such a nice model, especially the red figure there. (laughs) A very accurate Martin standing next to the machine. Wait, so these triangles. So seen from this direction, the loop machine would be spinning counterclockwise. Yeah, so that's why in this example, I have to change the direction of these triangles. And clockwise is easier because we have to transmit the motion from these triangles to, to this thing. And clockwise would have made more sense. But it's not over until it's over, right? Nope. Um. <laughs> Story of our lives. Yeah. Let's see if we can find uh, the designs for these loop beaters. No, not there. Should be in this sketch. Oh, maybe the sketch is not visible. Yes, object visibility. There we go. So basically what I have to do is that I have to turn this uh, triangle the other way. So you just let's mirror this line over this. No, sorry. Mirror this. And if we finish the sketch and then we're going to extrude the other profile. So instead of extruding this profile, we're going to extrude this one and all of them should change. Oh yes. Beautiful. So. This is, I really hope I can make this work. If we put this pivot close to the loop. So for example, I I can actually show it to you in this sketch. So let's say we put the pivot here and the reader. here and then the drumstick goes out here then this works because the the thing is pushing up but it's instead of kind of pulling the oh sorry instead of pulling the mechanism it's pushing it which is a little bit uh, less preferable but i think as a trade off um But why am I attaching it here? I could equally well attach it here. Yeah, it's like if the only thing was the, um, if I could choose this freely, the the spinning direction of this drum, um, I would do it the other way around, but I still think this is much more elegant. So let's hope that works and let's see what this means for our programming wheel in the gear train. 
So first of all, like we can exclude this whole thing. How wonderful is that? Look, bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> That's that's great. Don't mind ask. So this would cause a delay in the drums when playing at higher tempos, right? Um, in relation to what is um, in relation to the falling marbles? I don't know. Um, because it's going to be the same with um like we had on the um, Hyatt machine, that we had this little brass thing that was um, the timing clutch thing. Uh, it's going to be the same. Um, that we have to adjust the relationship between the loop machine and the programming wheel, depending on time. So if that's what you mean, I think you're absolutely correct. But the changing direction of the loop machine is not affecting this. So, if we could accept this programming wheel gear to turn in the opposite direction, hmm, can we do that? We can pull it. Maybe we can pull it from below. Because now I'm thinking... Because I hate this little extra... This little extra gear is there to reverse the direction of the programming wheel. Since we have reversed the direction of the crank. And a more elegant... Much more elegant gear train would be to just skip this one as well. And have... Uh, the programming wheel attaching to this gear, which is an exact copy. It's an exact copy of the gear train from Marmachin X, except it spins in the opposite direction. Okay, G Dome here. Idea for sketching ideas. Have a big whiteboard in which you can draw stuff before drawing anything on CAD. Well, that's why we have the <laughs> iPad lying right there. Yeah. You can actually sketch. I, I, I can sketch here. Um, it's it's a good idea, but um, the reason what we started this morning with the global parameters is that I'm I want to build. Um, I feel like I'm doing a hybrid thing where I'm um, sketching in CAD. And yeah, it is it is a little time consuming, but I'm also learning how to build the model correctly. So, um, but I can, actually, when you, when, now when you mention it, um, I can show you something at least here. So if before we had the programming wheel, spinning this direction and we were reading the programming pins up here so these are the registrators they were flipping that way um, and when they were flipping that way they were like pulling stuff and that was releasing the marbles like this here's the marbles being released and so the question if we revert this Move, movement like this the question is if we have to like start over because the whole muting mechanism that we did uh, with, the, with the hooks here that worked great I don't think maybe we should change that and yeah Hmm. 
know now the iPad is blinking as well. Yeah, that's because you have the power in stuff <laughs> inserted in it. <laughs> Too much power to handle, Martin. But what I was thinking. Oh, can I sh can you show the sketch again? Oh, of course I can. So, of course, if if we go this way, we can pull on the underside of the wheel, right? So if we just put everything upside down and we register it down here, then we pull this way. So when when you go 180 degrees on the other side of the wheel, you can have the pull and just so just let's say this. You have the link like that. And it's a kind of interesting idea to leave all this space. Um for marble divider, like no programming stuff up there. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be kind of busy down here as well. So, hmm. Hmm. Very hard to know. I want to redesign. So this assembly that I removed, I'm actually not going to remove it. I'm going to redesign it. Let's see here. Uh, 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 uh. So instead of putting all this stuff on this pivot point, we're going to put it up here on this pivot point because it's going to share this pivot point. Uh, so let me see. Can I even do this? I edit this feature. I'm choosing this line instead. I've almost never done this. This usually doesn't go well. Okay, so far so good. Everything have changed to a new position. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And it's projecting this point. So I'm gonna delete the projection and I'm gonna project. Just gonna make sure I'm projecting the correct thing. I'm gonna project this line instead. I'm gonna hide the other sketch and make this a construction line. And now we're going to say that you are coincident with you and you are coincident. You are coincident with <laughs> you. <laughs> you. With you. How many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> Finish get Et voilà. There we go. Hannes Paradis. We have moved our assembly. And this is not a gear anymore. This is... Um, loop drum. So we're going to change this. Let's just put 800 here. And this is not this. So like this begin this early in the process it's almost harder because nothing is decided which means like when you still can make like when everything is on the table uh, the the alternatives it's almost like deafening so the way I'm trying to do it is just to try to make one decision after another and eventually things will um, hopefully start to fall in place. So I would like to have, should this be centered in the machine? That's not sure. So let me just make a constraint here for the width of the drum on one side towards the middle of the machine. 
and another one this way. Oof. Oof. It's, uh, oh, I should have taken the radius. It's too big. 400. There we go. And I think this should be another color. And wait, this shaft is actually not needed anymore. So let's delete this component altogether. And let's rename this one. Let's check our main assembly. Yahoo! Yahoo! <laughs> wow. That looks nice, right? Really cool. It's uh, cutting into the programming wheel, which tells me that we should move. And and this is this this is what I realized in the beginning. When we were doing this design with like a whole separate gear for the loop machine, um, we ran out of space fast. So we're gonna move this down now. So these two circles should not overlap. Uh, and what is broken with this now? Don't. What? Why are these tangential constraints broken? Huh. That's bad because this is our mother sketch that we're using to drive all the designs. Oof. So. I'm going to delete this one. Oh, now they're unbroken all of a sudden. Good. Because we don't have this one anymore. Delete. Delete. And I'm going to move this one much lower. Yeah, so maybe this has to be monstrous. Maybe we have to make this gear monstrously large. Um, gear 2, pitch D. Uh, let's increase that. So we go into our parameter list and we find gear 2, pitch D, uh, and we do much bigger 300 because now we can move this down this line down here represents the floor so we just want the gear to not touch the floor I want a flywheel to use the same um, what is it called axle as well we increase this seven hundred. So, how can I? How can I arrange them now? I don't want the loop machine to be under, okay. If we lowered the crank, or if we made this gear bigger, no. Okay, let's make them even a little bit bigger. Um, gear 2 pitch the right? Let's try it. 35 centimeters. Oh yeah, I'm stupid. The gear can be bigger as long as the loop, the loop drum 
can't touch this line. Mm -hmm. So it's funny, now when I start to look at it, this is also not super easy to solve nicely. Because we can't make so much bigger gear than this. Let's just have a quick look. Because now all these changes should propagate to the master assembly automatically, not to this master assembly. So everything I just did should affect this assembly now. Let's see how much things are breaking. Whoa, Oi. <laughs> here we go. We have a uh, team big gears. What happened there? That one is a little bit oversized, I feel. What do you think? So let's go to the. Programming wheel assembly here. This has not updated correctly. Gear D pitch. Gear 2D pitch the uh, divided by 2. Why did that go crazy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a big symbol, that one. Yeah. Gear 2 pitch the Gear 2D pitch the uh, Oh, times 8. I had... Um, I had a parameter, I had a relationship in the parameter built based on another parameter. Because I said that we were going to do... Oh yes, yeah, so it's actually true. Okay, yeah, so I can't, I can't go crazy on this. It's actually true. We have to go, we have to go back to uh, tiny land again. <laughs> tiny land. <laughs> So Fusion did 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 actually exactly what I wanted it to do. It's just that I asked it to do the wrong thing. So let's update this now. Come on. Oh. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Here we go. You know what? I'm just gonna head outside for a quick little. Break. Yep. Do you need anything? I'm coffee? holding the. F I'm holding the fort. I have coffee. Thank coffee, you. Coffee, water. Inspiration you don't need. You're full of it. <laughs> yeah. So this might turn out. Okay, so if we put these two gears, maybe we need the inter... So maybe what I think we're finding out here is that I need this intermediate gear anyway. Which makes us giving... And it may be a blessing in disguise, because that gives us the... To make this mesh correctly, I will need this intermediate gear anyway. And then it's one, two, eight. So I'm just thinking of the one to 64. Yes, we can just have the same gear. We could also use timing belt, but I want to avoid that if possible. 
So maybe putting the loop machine on this shaft... I want to solve it, but but it gives us some new issues. Because we have to reach down with this gear, down to the center of, of this shaft somehow, without messing up the, the gear ratio. And the gear ratio need to be 1 to 8. Which means, hmm, which means that the sizes become wrong. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe, maybe I'm just going to revert this whole thing to where this stream started. <laughs> That's why we're here, right? Um... You know what? Let's start a brand new sketch. So I'm going to do what someone suggested in in chat um, here. Sketch. I'm gonna sketch it without without the bodies, but I'm going to sketch it in CAD with with circles. Crank gear. Um, programming wheel. A loop machine. If you are tangential to you, and you are, because the relationships we know, so we can put, for example, uh, twenty. Then we then we know that this circle is going to be twenty times eight. So let's take um, d one, d one multiplied by eight. And then we have the first relationship between the loop machine. And then we want... Another relationship here. So if I say that this one is 24. And I check the number of that, D3. Then I say the programming wheel is D3 times 8, and you are tangential. So we will be able to see like the theoretical possibilities slash impossibilities in getting this to mesh. So if the floor is here, um, this gear can be large, this gear can go there. So if the loop, so let's say the loop drum is 80, 800. Yes, okay. I'm just going to add a zero on all these measurements. Um... Two hundred and forty. I was in the wrong scale. <laughs> so I'm trying to like theoretically find out how I can do this without timing belt and still maintain the correct gear ratios to everything. And I'm coming up because I do not want this circle to intersect with this circle. I don't want this intersection right here. This is what I'm trying to avoid. And coming up pretty quickly. I mean, we can do 100 gears between in a long like row, uh, but that's uh, not good. We can do a timing belt. I don't want to do that. Why not actually?
L let's just like put a timing belt here just to like uh oh you need help oh carrying so much stuff so one way to solve this with very few parts would be to have a timing belt here it's going to be the world's largest timing belt <laughs> And it won't make a lot of sound because it will uh, run very slow. Maybe this, maybe this is the way to go. Oh, um, warm coffee for you. Oh, thank you. But this is way too big now. Let's put thousand. Why is, why is this 1600? Because this is too big. So... Whew. Yeah. So if we did a timing belt, which direction would the programming wheel go? I think it would go in the correct direction then, right? Yes, it would, because this is going counter... Uh, this is going clockwise, this is going counterclockwise. That would actually also solve the rotational direction of the programming wheel. And it's a very efficient gear train, actually. Hmm. Whoa, we, ha we would have only two gears. We would have only one gear going one to eight, and then that would be it. Timing belt, Hannes, oh, 3000. Are we at timing belts now? <laughs> that was what everyone said the first stream, and now I'm at the timing belt. Yeah, team belts, you know, they, I, I see them out there. Yeah, so, so to demonstrate to people, the, the issue is that I don't want this circle to intersect with the circle down here. Because they are the two loops. It will be the largest timing belt I've ever known of. <laughs> and will it be actually, how accurate will it be? I just need to remind yet again, the gears weren't the big issues with the first machines, at least. No. That's a big thing to also keep in mind. They worked. We know, we, we know that they work, at least. Yeah. But good. it's good to good to at least think about the belts yeah but now with this new idea with the drum underneath and to use only one axle i am i'm not reaching the programming wheel gear um i can't reach it but with a belt i can reach it do you physically need to reach it or <laughs> with, with, sketch? yeah the power transmission needs to reach it ah. um, so and then we would have the flywheel which goes on the outside yeah I'm, I think I'm gonna CAD this solution um My worry is of the exactness of the belt, but the belt will not stretch, will it? These belts doesn't stretch. I don't think it will be any... Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking loudly here, everyone. Yeah. That's what a live stream is. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. So I mean the yeah. Ten you need a tensioner for the belt. Yeah, th that's that's what's put me off. You know. That's what's putting me off. Luke Mafia and Sean Collins here reminding belt tensioning. Belt tensioning is always making like a sound and it's hard to assemble. You have to really think about how to assemble. And I'm always thinking like, what if the belt like expands, but with heat, probably industrial belts are, are really, really good. They use them in cars and stuff, right? Yeah, they use them everywhere. <clears throat> they use them everywhere. And I mean, it would look cool. It would look cool. But I'm just and I, I and I get the correct rotation of the programming wheel, and I remove. I have removed like two gears and two shafts, um, which is great. Let's see what Bit Fiddler is saying here: one full size gap filler gear or two half size gap fillers, depending on the final rotation direction wanted. Oh, that's a that's that's a very very good comment. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate uh, what gap filler. <laughs> no, what was the name? Bit fiddler. Bit fiddler. Gap filler. So um, the the idea here, because we don't want to change the gear ratio, and this is what what was messing me up. So that comment is spot on, actually. Either I need a circle as big as this one. So I need to copy this and put it in between like this, which would look cool. It's a huge gear though. And this would have done only one to one um, or two of these ones to, to, to bridge, to bridge the distance. So one, two, it's not even enough, three. So these are our alternatives or go back to putting the loop on, on, on its own, putting the loop on its own shaft. And then what we can do then is to just make them mesh, mesh like this, like they mesh on the, like on the original machine, this gear is, um, protruding into, you can see how they're meshing here. Mm. So this makes a lot of sense. But then, but then, Hannes. What, Martin? <laughs> So we can put the loop machine on a one-to-one -one gear from this. Hang on, then the direction is better for the loop machine, but bad for the programming wheel. And Budel Rat asks bicycle chain question mark. And there's a lot of people in the chat generally asking about chains. Is that a solution as well? What your what's your thoughts on that, Martin? <laughs> chains. That's cool. I mean, but they can be quite loud, no? I don't know. I don't think so. Chains. Maybe you just sold it here. I wasn't thinking about chains. Let's can see you, what chat has to Can you put some pictures up on ch on like industrial chain gears? Like instead of having like this timing belt with less protrusion, like just have this um, metal gears and just chains. Sean Collins immediately here. Not a fan of chains as it's more small part and metal needs lube. 
It's small if you're in the bicycle chain territory, but if you go to industrial mega chain territory. Thomas Knight Wagner, durability chain 10, gear durability 100. Okay. Um, chains are loud, chains noisy. Chains will also stretch with time. <laughs> Björn Valentinus, biking is better. Well, you're right on that one. So, so like, often when... Often these truths, in quotation mark are coming from like industrial applications and the marble machine is just not adding the same kind of stresses. And this chain in particular to the programming wheel would rotate very, very slowly. So keep in mind that it would go like... So it's not like several RPMs. Uh, like it, it, it does like one rotation every two minutes. Like, no, every... Every 30 seconds, maybe. I don't think the sound would be an issue. And So we have three different solutions right now to think about. We have the gears, we have the belts, and we have the chains Yeah. to think about. And also Bitfiddler just uh, wrote again saying that gap fillers can be any size that equals one to one. Yeah. Um... Ah, okay, okay, okay. I'm with you. I didn't, I didn't exhort all possibilities. His, uh, they are very, very correct. This is what what gap filler means now. So if this, I'm just putting an equal sign between this gear and this gear. Yeah, you're you you're absolutely right. Um, Jeremy, Heidi, chains are hundreds of extra moving parts. Yeah. That's something to think about. Yeah. What I like with a chain compared to a timing belt is that you can open it, which means that I can assemble the whole machine and you can kind of put a chain over um, one... Um, you can open the chain with a little chain lock thing and you can put a chain on top of your gears when the whole machine is assembled, stretch it together and lock the chain. And so from an assembly perspective, the, a rigid loop of a timing belt is, is, is not nice to work with. So I think it's a big pro. Um, and also talking about tension in a long chain like this, you will probably be able to tune it by adding or removing one link. Um, and Or maybe that's not enough uh, granularity in the tuning. Maybe you will... It will be too hard or just too sloppy. So, but then maybe you can have just a roller, a roller wheel that tunes the chain. Yeah, Nick Krose. Less is more, Martin. Less is more. Okay, so Janik, what do you mean in this case with less is more? Um, we agree on the sentiment at least. Because I do agree as well, which means that less shafts and less gears. We also have Team Drive Shaft uh, coming into the chat now. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people drive shaft. Can, can you find some like industrial chain with gear? Can you find something like that? Just some images to just get some inspiration. Um... I'm just going to check the rotation. So this would be um, clockwise. This would be anti-clockwise. This would be clockwise. This would be anti-clockwise. And this would then go the wrong direction because that would be clock clockwise. And we want the programming wheel to go anti-clockwise. So these two filler gears not only is it a lot of extra steps, I think from a mechanical power transmission point of view, to have a belt between this gear and straight up to the big one, compared to transmitting the power over these two in-between gears is just way, um, way more elegant. You can kind of see it in immediately if I do this. I like the chain idea. Especially, especially for the reason that you could open and close the chain. And if the chain breaks, you can replace it 
Um, and yeah, you would need like oil and stuff, but it's not like also, it's not outside. Okay, let's scroll through. Yep. Some chains here. Look at those double look, look chains. Look here. I love the double chains. They don't look very nice though. <laughs> They're old. Used. So I wonder about backlash, like in a chain. If you tension the chain, it shouldn't be. Agriculture roller. Hmm. Chain gear. Industrial. It's probably expensive. If I'm about to take sides here, I feel chains is not the way to go. Why? That's just my opinion. I just by the looks and thoughts about it, it okay, this can I mean it it doesn't feel super precise, no? Can't it slide over the teeth and stuff like that? Like wait on your on your bike. But then <laughs> then it has to be the same argument against timing belts. So then you're in team gears then. Or team uh, drive shaft. <laughs> you know me, I've always been team team gears. Um. <sighs> okay, so let's let's put the, the, the only thing I'm worried when I see all these new solutions when I knew that okay, we had something that worked the first time. Okay, 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 okay. Let's put But let's see here. Yannick Shaper has uh, written here, let's see. Also, one intermediate gear, like in your origi original design, can have any size without changing the total ratio. True. True. Uh, a fountain of wisdom, this Yannick. Uh, and here we have the Pixel Mint. Tim Hunkin on YouTube has the great series The Secret Life of Components. Talks a lot about different linkages like this. Might be inspiring. Oh, good idea. Tim, what was the name? Tim Hankin. Uh, and then we have uh, Vibrantly Brantly. A tensioner to a belt on a knob that could lock in place with a pin would be easier to adjust than removing a link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, 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 a roller that just pushes it in. So this comment was interesting because I forgot about this, uh, the, what Yannick said. This gear doesn't affect uh, the gear ratio. And if we only have one, aren't we getting, isn't that exactly what we need? Aren't we getting the correct rotation here and beautiful plywood gears in, in nice sizes? Let's see. I just forgot about this. I think maybe we have solved it. Clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. We solved it. We solved it. I think. I, <laughs> I think so because because uh, because I was I was stupid. I I have heard this before. So let me just do this one. It's tangential to this one. Uh, can you? Just go where I want you to go, there. Because I don't want to go from a big gear to a smaller gear because that adds stress. And here we go from a small gear to a little bit of a bigger gear to a much bigger gear. Which is nice. This is just going to look nice and this makes, makes us able to have the loop machine and the flywheel and everything on this thing. Um, I think I also seen something about motorcycle chains that's pretty quiet I guess motorcycles are super loud <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a feature for it I hate <laughs> motorcycles that way no look at me here I come 
heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you are making enemies right now, Hannes Gullhausen. Uh, yes, well, come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Assertive upgrade in the 3000 package. <laughs> Hellfire upgrade. And this actually, hmm, okay. So, you know what? If we can if we can not have a chain here, the, the whole thing with a chain, and there's just one gear in between... This feels good. What do you think? So we're on gears now. Now we're on gears. Now we're back on gears. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, let me. I'm going to. I'm going to cut this solution now. Cut this solution now. I think we should really think about all the options as well. I mean, team belt is giving a lot of uh, reasoning why that's better. We should just try both of them, perhaps. Uh, can I? Can I? Le hear? Let's let's now go with what we know. Uh, what we know works. Yeah, basically, this yeah. is actually the solution that we already have. I just yeah. have to tweak the sizes, and because I forgot that this intermediate gear is not affecting the gear ratio. So thank you, Yannick, for for reminding me about that. So we're gonna say. And now we have Team Hannes here as well with uh, <laughs> motorcycles. So I'm also making friends out there, Martin. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, so I'm I'm just gonna tell you to be random, or not really random. I'm going to. Ta <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Covid is long in my. In, it takes a long time for me to get out of that stupid thing. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. 600. I have a good feeling about this. Very good feeling about this. I mean, I mean, Team Belt is cocky. Like here they're saying, Team Belt will win in the end. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> so, team, team Belt, I would love if you can explain why you're better than Team Chain. Yeah. Team to and and it's not and a team, flat, team gear. It's not a flat belt, right? Because we have to remain the gear ratio, so it has to be a toothed belt. Um, and it has to be super special because, like, have you ever seen a one meter in diameter like a uh, tooth belt gear? It's 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 here, kind of difficult to make, I think. Here comes Team Lego gears as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my heart is with you, but I'm, I'm sorry you're not even in the competition. Okay? Leo Barbaro, gear, hashtag gears for tears. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me just figure something out. This one is 120. So why is this still 1,000? Gear 2, Pitch Dia. I should just do Gear 2, Pitch Dia, times 8. And that should not be 1000. No, see, 960. So we're already clearing there. But I want this loop to be under. So I'm moving the crank closer to the thing. Mm hmm. Oh wait, wait, wait. This gear can be larger because that doesn't have to be. It's actually the loop. The gear can be on the outside. It's actually the loop that shouldn't overlap. The loop machine drum. So let's let's make this one a little bit bigger. Gear one pitch the. Uh, uh, where are you? Here, 120. Let's make you 150. S A R Q F. Belts equal no noise, smooth operation slash transmission, not hazardous, easy to tension. Mm hmm. The hazardous one, perhaps. Yeah, yeah so belts. Belts need pulleys. This is my beef with belts. So Team Belt has to tell me. How to make a one meter in diameter belt pulley without ruining yourself or 
crying. <laughs> so, so a belt in itself, I love the idea with a belt, but a belt is three parts. Pulley, belt, pulley. Tensioner, da 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 da. So you pretty fast come up with like a lot of stuff for a belt to work. And this is my, I bought some real timing belts for the Marble Machine X. And I remember paying so much money for like two small pulleys in Trollhättan. Woo! It was expensive. Yeah, but it was great though. <laughs> yes. It was fantastic. So check this out. Uh, Beautiful wrapped. Remember that your belt diameter can be anything you want. It doesn't have to ride on outside of drum. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, that's true. Francesco Fada, belt is light. Not adding any inertia to the system for faster starting time and easy to repair. Road tomorrow, go the best of both worlds. Use a timing belt. So, on team belts, favor, I already feel here that the play we're running into placement issues fast, even with this much better solution that we have now. Like, this is a good solution for the gears. Um, so just to address the point that we could drive the programming wheel with a much smaller thing, but then you have a leverage uh, issue. So let's say that we put a small gear in the middle here and we take a timing belt to this pulley here. Uh, this timing belt, we have the force acting outside here. This is where the programming will need to act, which means that um, this, the forces on this belt is going to be it's going to be weaker. So that's why I'm 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 loving the idea of whatever runs the programming wheel. I want to run it on the big edge. And that's why I like these um, plywood gears that we can cut with our CNC machine. I'm going to show it to you. Uh, our rotary CNC machine fusion is maybe hanging now. No. Can we have a save then? Yeah, I think so. So that's why I'm I'm a little bit obsessed with driving the programming wheel as on the outside as possible. You're right that we could drive it from the middle, like we're gonna drive the flywheel from the middle. But then in the flywheel, it's the opposite relationship. The outside rim will power the small middle. So because of leverage, I want to power it really on the outside rim if I can. Um, loving this discussion. So happy that you all want to have it because it's really helping me think. Um, S-A-R-Q-F. You don't need large pulleys. You just need the ratio between them to match the rotation speeds you're aiming for. Pulleys can be mounted on a central axis in the drums. Yeah, so that's the same point. But my point is then, if you if you have a one centimeter pull in the middle that drives a one meter wheel, you have a leverage issue there. You you have to put a lot of force on a one centimeter small pulley to move the one meter wheel and even more pull programming pins and stuff. So at the end, it's um. It's a force multiplier um, if you make small pulleys. And this is what I'm trying. I'm trying to keep the gear train light to drive. And I'm trying to make the programming wheel brutally strong. Um, but what I'm looking at here right now is that we still have placement issues with this one gear. Maybe it just needs to be a little bit something. Maybe smaller. Let's see what we can do here. So if this is smaller, let me play around with this a little bit. That can be, can that be inside? Yes. Uh, 
theory, theory mad. Hashtag team steam train. What about a connecting rod like an old steam train? Ah, like that. Yeah, we don't, we need a gear. We don't have something that spins in the same tempo down there. Well, we would if we had this. Yeah, I don't think it would be so precise. Cool idea, though. Okay, CJ sums it up kind of here then. Gear is easier to implement, but has quick wear issues if made of wood. Chain would be easy to source, but would be loud and hard to tension correctly. The belt would be quiet, but it's more expensive. So the, the wooden gears does not wear. Um, but nice summary, but uh, the wear of the wooden gears have been debunked. Uh, I've, <laughs> I've thrown... I've It's uh, busted. I abused Wilson <laughs> daily for five years, and it doesn't have a scratch. <laughs> but it's a good summary. The, the wooden gears are not wearing. Um, they might be expanding with, with humidity. That that's that that's could be something. Leo Bar Barbaro, MMX gears never failed. Use what known. Boom. I'm dropping the mic there. Yeah. <laughs> so if you missed it from yesterday. We are actually following that principle, but not truly. We're actually doing helical uh, plywood gears, which further reduces the wear, I guess. But and sound. And sound and make the interaction less smooth. So I am tilted towards gears because I'm in love with the idea of the helical gears uh, as well a little bit. But I'm fighting here with this position so I'm going to make, I'm going to add drum. Um, so this is the loop drum, so say 800, and this should not interact with this. And things are not that easy. Maybe this just has to be large and and the thing is I don't want the I'm gonna open the CNC machine actually just to show people because that also um, this is um, affecting my decision a lot um, so one of our plans I already had it open actually is that uh, Alex CNC and Avid CNC and me have worked on um, rotary axle uh, for my CNC machine. So, and this would be able to cut 110 centimeters times 110 centimeters large things. Um, very, very precisely with perfect, running perfect around a circle, like perfectly round. Um, so 110 is the very, very, very limit. So we should not, do things like over one meter and I could actually solve this equation by having this gear making this gear huge so just to show you that I can I can do that gear one pitch if I make this 200 the first gear this gear becomes huge and I have all the freedom I want but I can't make a one and a half meter big gear um, so I'm constrained to kind of the, the large things should be one meter in diameter, kind of. <clears throat> There's something interesting on Discord I want to show you, Martin. Yeah. So let's see here. Can you pull it in our new yeah. field? Yeah, James De Bono. Uh, here's my idea for the large herringbone gear. I believe that using Delrin will make the gears much smoother and quieter, but making a gear that large would require a huge lab of Delrin. I propose making the gear in small Delrin segments that slot and bolt into a large laminated plywood wheel. The segments are divided between the teeth so that it will not affect the gear meshing. Perhaps this is something that will reduce the noise of it? Yeah, something so, like this? Um, 
Uh, it's funny, uh, this thought is super nicely made, super nicely cutted. This thought has crossed my mind. Can you pull it up in our new um, in our new scene where it's just above us? The one we made this morning? Oh, you mean this one? Yes, that's my favorite one. Yeah, look at this. Because then we can look at ideas while we're working. Um, so huge shout out to, what was the name? Uh, James... Uh... Uh, De Bono. Yeah. Um, it's a really cool option. Kind of expensive. Um, and it will add... <laughs> wow, bless you, <laughs> Honest <Thank> 3000. You. <laughs> it will add some inaccuracies because you have to like add up another part to another part. But of course, you will machine the Delrin on the plywood thing, on the things, and no, uh, scratch that, no inaccuracies, because you will machine the Delrin in place. The way I would make this on, on the rotary CNC is that you would... Where is it then? It's here. You would add the Delrin to the plywood stock, and then you would machine the Delrin on the perfect center. And so, no inaccuracies, that was my wrong... Um, I don't know about sound though. Plywood is a little bit softer than Delrin. Delrin slides nicely. Um, but really nice CAD and love the suggestions coming. Uh, Chad Stocking wrote here, intermediate gear does change ratio unless the gear driving it is the same size. Mm. Then I see someone underneath there. No, that's wrong. Yeah, th this is... I thought what you thought earlier today, and then someone corrected me, that, that the size of this gear does not affect the speed of the programming wheel at all. It's a little spooky, but true. <laughs> it's spooky, but true. <laughs> <laughs> Spook, but true. <laughs> so here's my beef. I don't want the loop machine to come so much forward. So... When I pull this around, I can pull it over here. And everything is, everyone is happy. Everything is fantastic. <laughs> but I don't want the loop machine to be... We need some drums in here. Oh, now that's a truth right there. We need some drums. Let me... <laughs> Let me just think about... Lawrence Clarkson, Delrin is a self-lubricated material and hence will run smoother and more quietly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, I think that's theory, probably true. But I don't know if the extra quietness would be worth it compared to... Um, It's it's so beautiful. It's it would be cool though. It's machines beautifully. Yeah, may, maybe it's worth it. Can I get a save and a cheers, please? Cheers. Cheers. And don't forget to save. I did save. And cheers to the audience, of yeah, course. Cheers. Uh. I just want this to fall in place with something that I feel like is there's a lot of. Maybe this gear is on the wrong side. Hmm. 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 So where? Let me have a look at where the instruments are in our little sketch here. Desert pillar. What about having the loop machine drum behind? Move it. Yeah, it's it's the direction that I'm trying to get it in because now. Hmm. 
Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hold on to your horses, everybody. Um. Look at this. So. Loop machine. Its own axle is returning. Boom, boom, boom. Which also means that we get a correct rotation of the loop machine. Boom. But where do we get the... <laughs> oh no, we don't get a good gear ratio from anywhere. Because the loop machine, like someone just suggested, like to have it a little bit, at least underneath here, not in the front here. A little bit back here. Feels right. And then it's just a long way. So what if we then change... Okay, maybe I should marinate on this. Let it simmer for a while. Yeah. I wanted I wanted a solution where everything just falls into place. So let's look again at the So let's let's think about less dumb design requirements and mm -hmm. Earlier in this stream, we changed the direction, the rotational direction of the loop machine. And we turned these around. And I said, I liked that less. So it's it's like a bunch of trade-offs in my brain right now. Like, um, like it's like hundred variables at the same time uh, going in going going into this like scheme. And I should kind of maybe just start from first principles and just think like, what is what are the actual real rules? Um, like, what are the things that I do not want to change? Um, and perhaps to let it marinate, perhaps I should add the drums into the main assembly, get a little bit of break from this and rest our, rest our where am I? Let's see where we let's see how things are looking. Pretty as ever, my friend. <laughs> yeah. But I'm fooling myself. I know how I am with these things. I'm I will not be able to let it go until I have <laughs> until I have a better idea. Until I have an idea on how to do it. So, so basically what you can see here is that I don't, the base, hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, I think I need to understand like where, where the drums... Um, let's put some drums in. Let's put some instruments in. Yeah, one arm T-Rex uh, instrument position requirement one. Yeah, good, 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 good. Here we go. Yeah. We're gonna return to this. We have a lot of good options. Yep. We're gonna return to instrument positions. Let's check this out instead. My parametric arrow is not so parametric anymore, <laughs> <laughs> which means it never was. Want the crank distance to be longer Let's do six hundred. That's still working neatly. Whoop whoop. Now nice microphone stand. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Instrument position requirement number one. Yeah, so this is perfect. Let's do this. Let's add some more variables. Um, let's make a kick drum. Plus, save. Zero six zero zero kick drum assembly boom and am I even going to here? I'm not going to make a master sketch. I don't think. Oh well, I could new component zero six zero oh, zero oh. master sketch. And am I going to drive this with some kind of parameters or not? Doesn't really matter, I think. Let's start with the with the distance plane. Minus 200. Boom. Boom. I'm going to take the measurements from the kick drum we did in the blocking because we had help from chat with finding some different standard kick drums. Yeah. Snare drums. This, this point up here is going to be the midpoint of the drum, which is good because that's going to be like the center hit point. So with these two constraints, we can control exactly where, where the drum is. And then we're going to take a quick look. Okay. This was good. It's good. We, we're, we're looking at something else for some time yep. and we're going to return to the fascinating discussion about the gear train. So what does it say here? 406 high and 228 radius. 228, 406. 228, 406. Comes. So let's revolve this kick drum. New component. 0601 kick drum. And this is an acoustic normal size kick drum because I want this machine to sound like it's playing music um, even without amplification. So let's just define this angle. No compound angles on this machine. 20 degree, what do you think? Ooh, love it. <laughs> you love it? Yes. 
So let's head over to our main assembly. <coughs> I have to here and let's add a kick drum. Brilliant. I catched it in the wrong dimension. I have a feeling this won't work. <laughs> well, let's be optimistic. If you missed it, by the way, we have solved the funnel problem. Yeah. Um, so this is the <laughs> this is the funnel design. <laughs> so no more issues with marbles missing the funnel. So, so the marble machine now comes with a custom built stage, also I guess. <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> okay, I screwed this up. Um, let me see. If we're lucky, I can I can fix this with only one edit feature. Check this out. Ooh, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I think it turned the other way around. Let me just save this. I think now it's backwards. I have one more fix to do. Let's upgrade this. A vegan drummer just says that we are number one. <laughs> I love that. Number one of what is the question then? Universe. Oh, okay. So now the drum is on top of the machine. So give me... <laughs> Cake bombs. <laughs> Putting the fun in funnel. <laughs> Put in the pun in funnel. That didn't work. Rafagd. No more marbles on the floor if floor is machine. Ah. Get you thinking, right? No more marbles on the floor if floor is machine. Yeah. <laughs> if it's all part of the machine. There is no floor. It's only machine, right? The world is a machine. <laughs> there has never been a marble on the floor. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> it was just a lie. <laughs> We've been living a lie. All those videos with the count, it was just like it was you were living in the matrix. I've, I've taken the red pill. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken the red pill, Hannes. <sighs> there is no floor. <laughs> yes. <sighs> okay. After having the drum in the gears on the top, if my mind is sane, we will now have the drum um, kind of in the front. Here we go. So, I think we should move it a little bit forward. safe to say that we should go forward. Show dimensions. Thousand. Boom. There is no floor. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> no hurry. Oh, eight. Just the earth is just a big marble, though. Oh, wait, wait here just a little bit. Could this shaft be the shaft that holds 
Um, the funnel? <laughs> that holds these? Look, because they're pretty close. Oh, oh, oh. I'm just saying. No, 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 I'm stupid. Because the on off function, no, they can't. Okay. <laughs> I love this one here, John Brown. I recently arrived at the following philosophy. With setback comes opportunity. Ooh. Ooh, that's beautiful. I heard a similar thing. The worst things that happens to you can often be the best things that happens to you. So, Ooh. Maybe a little bit too positive, but it doesn't feel like that one when it's happening. Okay, you know how much better I feel now when we have some drum reference? So let's add... Um, let's add a snare drum. And maybe I should make my life a little bit easier by actually just adding a snare drum in this design. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, new component, 0, 06, zero 02, snare drum, boom. Um, offset plane. So for example, now if I base this offset plane, if I want a relationship, so let's think about how we want to move these things around. I want to have the snare drum next to the kick drum, which means I want to tell CAD that there is a relationship between these two, which means that I should not put the snare drum in relationship to the um, CAD origin. I should put the snare drum in relationship to the kick drum. I'm just talking to my, talking loud to myself here. So if I make an offset plane, I should base it on the mid plane for the kick drum. So from this plane, I say that the snare drum should always be 300 millimeters away from the kick drum, 400 millimeters away. And if I just remember to do the changes correctly, the drums will move around in a group. Um, makes sense. So this is like a aha moment I've had lately. Why is this? Oh, this plane is here. Um, to really think of like what actually is your dependencies. And again, I want the hit points to be the same and the angle to be the same. So I'm just going to project. Let's project this whole line from the kick drum over to the snare drum. Um, and then we can make very, very simple, simply a snare drum over here with its own dimensions. Should we check the dimensions that we got from the chat in the first thing? Where are we? Blocking. I have so many tabs. I should throw some tabs. I'm just going to close some designs so I can navigate the tabs more easily. Here we go. Dead fish cheese spread. Martin, if you build it taller, you can use the marble twice. Now that's some outside of the <laughs> box thinking right there. Yeah. Here's the blocking. And but yesterday we put, uh, talking about taller, we put a shipping container in. <laughs> and the machine is already too tall. But I think this is a small shipping yeah, container. Yeah, there's going to be, there's bigger out there. That's a standard <laughs> one. Since have we we have never used anything standard. I mean the fun they have to there has to be a big one for the funnel. <laughs> oh yeah. That's gonna be like with helicopter, right? <laughs> I think it's a good sign that the funnel can catch a shipping container. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're safe. <laughs> I think Okay. Come on now, Martin. Focus. Three five five diameter. Oh here we have. 178, 140. So 
this is 178 and this is 140 oh yes it's the radius i'm stupid i was like that's a too small drum but we're going to revolve this Oof. so these drums are a little bit too close to each other too close for comfort so then I just edit this feature. I just give them some more space. 500. And dead fish cheese spread is on it here again. Just turn it on its side for shipping. We just lay it down. Oh, true. It will need like specialized lifting equipment and stuff. I'm right here. <laughs> 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 yeah, I saw I saw the bench press going on this morning in the gym. <laughs> That was phenomenal. Hannes 3000 know how to press the little last ounce of energy out of your arms, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have enough to press these buttons here today. <laughs> Nothing more than that. So, Bay Bow Champ, I am disappointed in the size of the funnel. I think you're underestimating how big of a funnel the audience can hold. Bigger! <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. We can laugh about it now. Um, okay, so I'm already feel. I'm already feeling happy for this reference, these reference points. So let's, so in the beginning, I constrained the crank to be at the same height as on the original machine. And then I started to move away from that when we were like shifting gears around. And I think I should move back to that again now. I'm just going to check again how high this crank is from the floor. Because ergonomics should also be like a... But of course with the playing position, 1056. Uh, NTC is saying here, I ship huge machines all over the world. Believe me, you don't want to pay a transport of an extra size container. Okay, that's good. That's a good tip. And here's an uh, important question as well. Andrew Bailey, can Hannes 3000 bench press Martin? And I say easily. I think you can do like 30 reps on yeah, a Martin. Probably. That's good content, right? You have to try. <laughs> <laughs> um, crank distance to floor, 1040. It was 1050 in original. And then the distance between, yeah, that doesn't matter. The height from the floor is more important. So my, my feeling is that we want to crank a little bit further like this. Let's see how that looks. Main assembly. When I update here, everything should update. Nice. Things are still following. So yeah, I think I think this helps because I think we really need to move the loop machine. Mm -mm -mm. I would like the floor to be in here. I'm going to do um temporary floor here.
Maybe I should just add a floor to, to, to this design. Floor. But you just said there is no floor. <laughs> I don't know what to believe anymore. Yannick Krose, just make two machines connected, one for drums, one for instruments. <coughs> I saw some of that yesterday as well. Like a long one. Connected somehow. Yeah. Then it may be doesn't need to be that high as well. Yeah, the width, yeah. Outside the box is good. Outside the container is good. Outside the <laughs> container box is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking outside the box good, outside the container box bad. I am going to derive this skeleton design straight into the main assembly. Let's see if we get a circular dependency that they often um, cry about. Fusion 360. I shouldn't probably say cry because it's for a good reason, of course. Here we go. We have a floor. I'm going to pull this to arrive in the beginning of the timeline. So the drums are very high at the moment. Oof. Wait, wait, wait. Can I drive? Okay, new idea. New idea. Let's go back to here. New idea. What happens if we do this? So this is the gear train we've been fighting with. We have this intermediate gear here. And we drive the loop machine from that. What happens here, especially with the dire now I'm stupid. Now I'm driving. No, that doesn't work. Of course, with the gear rates, yes. Uh, we haven't talked about the timing belt for the loop machine. That's like the configuration we haven't discussed. We had timing belt for the programming wheel up on the table. Hey, 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 I can put another, I can put a third gear here. Yes. And that could be one to one. If that is one to one to the loop machine, we are home. And then we have the directional change. Hang on. Hang on. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to say that you are something. You are 600. Then I'm going to check out what value 600 is. D11. And I'm just going to put D11 on this one because we want those to be one to one. 
maybe we're getting somewhere here now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, because. Clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. So both of the two loops are now spinning in the correct way. I have them where I want them to be. And no belts, nothing, only gears. And a lot of freedom with with um, positioning for ergonomics and stuff. And Yannick Krause says, Martin, I'm going to make a quick draft of the two connected machines. In about an hour, it's in the Discord. Oh, that's so fun. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Looking forward to see that. We will be right here when you're done. What do you think about this idea? Do you love it? You know my answer. <laughs> I'm still trying to find out where I'm going wrong with it. Ooh. Because mm -hmm. this could be something. John McCaffrey, is there a reason you can't put the loop machine on the intermediate gear? One last axle doesn't affect direction. On the intermediate gear. If you mean this one, this is what we thought the whole day that was how I started the stream this uh, and it just don't add up space wise it just doesn't work gear ratio wise and space wise it just doesn't work I would like to see this in 3d uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to turn this into 3D and show everyone exactly what I mean. That is going to be the next step. So let me head over to our real design here. John McCaffrey says, no, the one at the back. When he talked about, uh. Ah, that intermediate gear. Yeah, one less axle. That has not been considered. Very, this audience is skating where the puck is going. Gretzky! <laughs> Gretzky! <laughs> Gretzky warning in chat. Um... Yeah, gear ratio wise. Mm -hmm. That's why. Mm -hmm. um, or am I? Then, if we would put it on, first of all, like um, rotational direction would be good. But then this middle gear and this has to be one to one. But there's maybe, n and then, so then this one has to be small. And yeah, it doesn't work space wise. The loop machine would interact with the programming wheel 
if with the correct gear ratio, the loop machine would um, intersect with the programming drum. Is my my idea right now? So on the compound shaft, let's just add another gear. Do we have that design open? This is so fun. This is like my favorite, like making gear trains. I think it's, <laughs> it's so much fun. This is a Friday right here. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever saw one. Um, So I'm going to make team timing belt have a lot going for them right now. <laughs> Come on, snap, snap there. Thank you. Here, thickness, boom. It's nice. Nice. We have some nice stuff to to. I will see the fruit of our labors this morning. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And here, this distance is gear thickness. Plus the gap. Ooh. So we're using a lot, a lot, a lot of space there right now, adding a lot of width that a timing belt would also maybe be more compact. But let's not cry about that. Not yet. Right now. Wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah. Okay, that one is much. Oh yeah, it has an intermediate. Okay, yeah, it works, it works. Mm. I thought that I saw a mistake, but. No mistakes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> What I love with this round three is that, as I said, I will find out if I can give up on the whole idea by the end of this. And I won't, I will find out before going into a physical machine. So I will, um, gear new, I will be able to make the decision only from CAD. So that feels so good. So there is the intermediate gear, perfect. And then we are going to make on the loop machine assembly. Here. Oh. You know what? Screw this. I'm going to extrude in this one instead. 20. Boom. Ah. Uh oh. get a feeling here. Extrude uh, 20. 
בום. So that's going to be on the outside. And then we put this on the inside. So let's do 20. But we're going to start with an offset of 10 minus 100. There we go. Okay, okay. And then we have this one. Which is also 20 with the same offset. <laughs> Minus 100. Boom. Which will connect to the programming wheel. Here. 20. Offset. Minus 100. So they are all lining up there. Mm. Getting a little bit more approachable, right? Yeah. And then we have this one, which is the new one. Let's, let's just make a little nicer. Let's make it like this. Twenty with a much bigger offset minus two hundred. So we are on a new plane here if you see it Ooh. like this. <laughs> Ooh. You know what? I want all of them to be a little see through. We do this. We do this. that I think this is a little more efficient way to figure this out anyway just in one sketch nice Martin we're getting somewhere yoohoo <laughs> yoohoo <laughs> Sometimes I'm I'm thinking about progress as a staircase with very long steps. Yeah. So you're on one step and you just feel it's like the step itself is like one kilometer long. Yeah. And you feel that you want to take one step up and you're frustrated because you feel things are taking forever. But you have to keep walking on that step to be able to take the next step up. And that's what we're doing right now. I have materialized a pretty good idea over here. Um, I'm going to present to you two options. I'm just uh, finishing a timing belt on, on option two here to the right. So let me just, let me just do that. If I can offset this uh, turn, let's offset it with 20 then. I'm going to offset this with 20. And this. So we had great suggestions and discussions. And what we're doing is that we're designing the gear train. And as always, there's so many variables. And I think I, I'm, I'm maybe excluding timing belts before I'm actually know a lot about them the the timing belts i've been used have very shallow teeth so i've had issue with timing belts jumping uh jumping from tooth to tooth um and that scares me so but i was thinking maybe there are timing belts with thicker teeth um that won't jump so, okay, so here's two suggestions. These are all 
both these suggestions are correct rotational um, direction and correct gear ratio. Oh, we forgot yeah. the lights. It just didn't switch on, okay. But now we can see you. Cozy. Um, so, to the left here, I mean, this is all helical plywood gears. Let me just get a, a helical gear up on screen. I can show you how cool they are. Um, we'll learn to do that in another stream. Helical, where are you? Here we go. So we're going to use helical gear in a herringbone pattern, which means that we're mirroring um, this gear type components. We're mirroring this gear on its own face like this. So this means that the gear is self-centering, which otherwise it can push itself out. So let me find the gear sketch. So here to the left, imagine this beautiful clockwork of um, plywood gears. It's beautiful. And the reason I made this work is because they are on different levels. You can see it here. So, but here we have one, two, three, four, five, six gears. And the loop machine would go on this shaft programming drum would go on this shaft and the crank would go on this shaft and the spacing between them uh, is going to work out neatly and to the right we have the exact same idea but we're excluding this gear over here to the left and putting a timing belt directly to the big programming drum um I also want to show you, Martin. Let's see up here. Uh, you know, Yannick, Yannick Rosa, he put the scrappy design of the two machines connected on Discord. So you can actually have a look at it. Cool. Right there. Now that is a little outside thinking, right? <laughs> Someone was screaming. Fantastic. I mean, that's a pretty cool idea, no? Yeah, but the power transmission has to be transmitted like into a 90 degree angle. And yeah. I think. The, the foot. I think the. Um, I think the main argument against doing this is super nice to see an outside the box thing but it's a footprint of the machine. Like maybe the idea is to have two separate machines and just link them so that you transport them separately. I I think this complicates matters. But it was lovely, lovely to see. <clears throat> so what was it screaming about? <laughs> and that just was an old one. Okay. Yeah. Um... So, can you see Hannes 3000? If you can find images on timing belts with deep teeth. Timing belts? Yeah, timing belts with like large teeth. Because the ones I've used have so shallow teeth. And I think for car engines and stuff, I've seen bigger stuff. So, maybe I'm just not... So, here we have like alternative A... Um, an intermediate plywood gear or alternative uh, B drive directly with a belt and um, I'm just going to put this up then on your screen as well yes yeah, so these are the shallow tooth timing belts that I've been in, like working with already and when the tension is not like this is exactly the things that are used for Mar Machine X. When the tension is not correct, they jump. They jump. 
So can you see if you can find like deep, deep ones? Like another. I'm going to add into this sketch um, the drums. And I, I don't mean the, the, the drums as in the instrument. I mean as in the programming wheel drum and the loop drum. So let me do that a little bit quickly. I think I'm going to add them in a new sketch actually. So this would be the programming drum, uh, new body, boom, it's intersecting there. Let's make this distance a little bit less, 550, oh, 570, 580. So hey to everyone joining, <coughs> so wonderful to have your company. We are doing a lot of deep thinking today. Um, and just playing around with this gear train, trying to find like the, the minimal, I want to have the minimal amount of parts that satisfies uh, rotational direction, gear ratio, um, silent power transmission and good placement on the machine. So those are kind of the variables. Yeah, chat needs to help me out here. I'm, I'm searching everything you're throwing at me, but I don't find any with larger teeth or longer teeth, I guess, right? Even those on cars seems shallow. So this is what, this is what, um, this is why I like chain over, I don't think a chain will jump teeth. I don't think a chain can jump teeth. It sits deeper into the sprockets than a timing belt, a, th a thin toothed timing belt would do. Chat is saying it, you need wider teeth, not longer teeth. That's semantics, I think. I mm -hmm. mean, I mean deep, deeper. So I think you mean the same. Deeper, uh, wider. The deep. belt. Like like it goes down more into yeah. the gear. I mean, imagine like going on a going on a show and seeing this gear train start in motion. Like, I can't help loving like this plywood gear train right here. Kind of epic. I'm also going to add the flywheel to the outside. I think like a mechanical engineer would prefer, I don't know, actually, maybe would prefer the chain here. I think, by the way, that the uh, gear hubs should be lathered in metal. And then, so the, the center of the gear is not like plywood. It's like a metal thing sitting on these shafts. I think that would be extremely precise. And then you screw on the plywood gear onto the metal gear hub. Um, I think that's a better design than what we did before. And 
you can lay those like super accurately. So so it would be like um, very precise. Let's add the loop machine drum down here. Yeah, this is a better way to do it. Jairo Cabello reminds us, can you paste the Google Sheet to paste suggestions and links? I think that's the way to go. I will I will post it one more time. I also think it's in the description, but for just oh. to be safe, I just paste it here as well. You can add your the belts because I don't find it when I Google everything you throw at me. It still looks like kind of the same. So just my gut feeling, which is of course always wrong, is that a chain would never jump the sprocket while like a rubber timing belt could potentially want to jump the spr jump the, the sprocket. New body. So this loop went way loop drum went way too big. I think we're gonna do go with eighty. What? Not eighty. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. I love the look of these gears here. Oh yes. Oh yes. You like them too? Yes. Yeah, so nice. It's it's taking well who knows? Who knows? I mean we don't need this to go all the way out, this drum. So this sideways so I'm thinking about the sideways spacing it's taking. It might not be an issue. So let's add the flywheel. And yes. I want I wanna reuse I want to reuse and actually wow I think I want to reuse like um, a shaft for the flywheel so maybe this one would be epic to reuse if we can get this shaft outside this gear Because I want the flywheel to be monstrous. Don't you, Hans 3000? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So if I make this, if I make this measurement larger, 900, another big gear. Why is this touching so close to here? So if we would do this... We could... Piggyback on that shaft perhaps. to add a monstrosity of a flywheel there. So no timing belts with deeper teeth? Let's see what people are pasting. So here's my monstrous flywheel. Minus 20. This is going to be 
<laughs> yeah, but less is more, though. then we would have okay so let me pull this one out then we would have a pulley here let me make this pulley Three hundred So I love that all the gears are going to be like on almost on the same place, like next to each other. Like in a clock you kind of have like a gear train gathered. Um, I think that makes sense. So between the crank and the flywheel, we can use a flat belt, just like we did on Marble X. And that's super silent. And as long as it transmits, it doesn't have to transmit like exact. It has to transmit the energy or the power, but it doesn't have to transmit like exact revol revolutions. So a flat belt here is, is perfect. Do -do. <clears throat> Harrison Dean Hoffmeyer. I definitely agree with some other chatters though that timing belts skipping teeth is a solved problem in industry. The belt just needs to be sized properly for the torque demand and kept tensioned. Okay. So that's that's really good um that's really good information. Also, if, if we look at if we look at this timing belt, it's a meter around the whole thing. Up here, this belt is not gonna skip teeth, so it's not gonna skip tooth on the big thing. And I mean, down here. So if you say that it's a solved problem, I I I believe you. Maybe it was my accuracy that was off. Let's see if I can find something here. We have supercharger belts. And then note there is this stuff handles thousand horsepower easily. You want wider, not deeper teeth to have more contact surface. More deep on the teeth would be a nightmare to design the cog. And they look like this kind of. Yeah, this is exactly what I had on. Uh, like I can actually bring up the picture on the first machine. So if you look at that timing belt, that is the conveyor belt, is exactly what you're like. Can you show the picture at the same time? So look to the left there on the first machine. That's the same belt. And of course, my accuracy, I, I cut those plywood gears for that timing belt on a bandsaw. <laughs> <laughs> so accuracy, 1000. Perhaps. Here, and this here you have tractor. Yeah, that's th this. Like, look, this I feel 
This is what I mean. This I like better. So how's the um, sprockets look or the pulleys look for this one? I have no idea. What did you say? A carbon belt for tractor? Uh, let's see what it says. Grippy and tasty. Deeper teeth than car belts. This is in the USA, but I'm sure there are other belts similar around the world. Is it that one? Yeah. Tractor belt sample. So... So if this is a problem that is solved, maybe it's my experience from the silent <coughs> sink. Oh, sorry. What is this? I don't know. Something new here. Silent sink eagle belt. Quiet belt V-shape. Ah, uh, this looks kind of awesome. Silent sink. It's always like uh, good when it's German, German engineering. And Fantastic. here's carbon drive bicycle belts. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> I don't see any belts or chains though. Huh? Huh? So. Mm. Harley belt, very wide. Whoa, look at this. Let's see. Very wide. New body. There you go. That's wide, though. <laughs> kind of similar, like you said, with the first machine there. That thing, properly tensioned, would not jump teeth. I think you're absolutely correct. And it will be very silent. You know, Team Belt? I team think belt you might have... coming around here. I think you might have a new member. <laughs> and it's a member with quite a lot of say in the question as well. <laughs> um... Oh, actually, what I can do, I can steal this belt that I made over here. Um, and just drag it over here. Point to point command. Why is it? Have I? Sh uh huh. Because I'm stupid. So I'm actually going to ha remove all this, uh, delete. <laughs> Tim Keller just joined the chat here. Oh, nice. Hannes, you delicious mountain of man meat. California love to you both. <laughs> 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 Hello, Tim. Nice to hear from you. Still going strong. Yes. <laughs> Never miss a beat. How's the band going? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The broken, broken end mills. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wait, wait, wait. Um, so with this, with this, with the timing belt up here, this gear uh, would be gone. Then I need a new pivot point for the flywheel. And maybe the flywheel should just have its own thing. Sometimes when I try to combine, it makes, I'm like, oh, we put them on the same thing. And then it's like. Well, assembly becomes like twice as complicated because you have to put one thing in front of the other. And if it's just, imagine if the flywheel just has its own shaft and just like bolted on like last. Um, so maybe, maybe I should just think freely with the flywheel placement. 
I'm gonna hide this gear. Elliot, a few people are talking about maximizing teeth engagement by wrapping further around the pulleys. That's how it's done in industrial applications. Might mm. be good to look into. Okay, so that's a super good comment. So, um, that could easily be done then. You can also do that with the belt tensioner. Um, so... I always feel those small rollers are making s noise though. Um, but let me sketch um, what Elliot means. So let me make a new sketch over over here. <coughs> So S A R Q F with belts, everything can be driven from the same shaft, the one connected to the flywheel slash motor. Hmm. So the one connected to the flywheel. Or everything can be on the same shaft. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. It's a size thing though. But right now this gear is... I should probably not make a flywheel bigger than a meter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, my flywheel right now is 130. I think probably the flywheel is too big anyway. Let me just show you this comment about wrapping around. So. What I might be like worried about would be this small little gear here. Um, let's hide the bodies. Let's hide the bodies. Oh, <laughs> not during a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> so if we put here an outside roller that is also a belt tensioner. So this is a rolling wheel, boom. And this will push the belt into wrapping nicer around this little thing. Um, it's, a very, it's a very good comment. So we would, how can I cut this nicely? Let's just do, 10 millimeter thick belt for the purpose of this discussion. I think overcoming my fear of timing belts is 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 a good thing. Regardless. Team timing belt. <laughs> I just got auctioned off here. My girlfriend just said I should tell Tim Keller for 50 bucks. He can have a date with the delicious mountain of man meat. <laughs> She's fine with it. <laughs> 50 Very bucks, old. Tim Keller. <laughs> <laughs> There's your price. <laughs> that is extremely cheap, in my humble opinion. <laughs> and Aundheim Aund sends us some coffee money from Norway. It's good to see you all again. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone who is super chatting. It's um, it's so extremely generous of you. And we want to read out comments from everyone, regardless yeah. if they're boosting their comment with a super chat or not. But we're super, super grateful for all, all that support. Uh, it's it's beyond me how, how nice the world is treating this project. Yeah. So thank you. 
This looks engineering, doesn't it? <laughs> so I wonder if Tim paid the 50, who would get the money? I don't know, but Sneaky Beef, he just said 55 here. <laughs> it's going up now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. What has this turned into? The FOMO is real. <laughs> so I have to say that the chat has maybe done it again because we needed a way to tension the belt anyway. I would just throw something up on your screen here as well. Someone just posted a picture. I don't know if you want to see it. Let me see if I can just get it up there. Oh, this screen is so small now. Ah. Ah. Mm. Can you see it? I see it. This is this is exactly the principle we're This doing is right how now. car timing chain is tensioned. Ah, oh, wonderful. Maximize belt surface are against the cog. So can you show it in the window the 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 gears, Hannes? There you go. So chat, when you post these kind of images and we can import them directly into chat, I I just love my life. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is beautiful. When you, Everything is awesome. Uh, so keep on, because this is like very, very, very good inspiration. So here you can see how they like wrap the belt tightly around everything. I think, I, I guess in a car, if it skips one tooth, the whole engine kind of dies. Uh, Rocket Props says, make sure that it's on a spring system to make it adjustable. Oh, the, um, the extra little thing. Mm -hmm. So check this out. Not join. New body. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. And where is my pulley? I haven't done it yet. Okay, hang on. It's on its way here. Boom. Not join. New body. So on a spring. I mean, is, uh, what are they saying here? So on my CNC machine, the oh, belt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Serpentine belt. Is that what it's called? Okay. So the thing with the belt is that it just unlocks positioning completely. Because positioning with the gears is really tricky. The belt comes in like two centimeter, two centimeter bigger, two centimeter bigger, two centimeter bigger, plus the tensioning, which means that the belt is unlocking the position a lot. Um, and already here, this is not spinning super fast. It's already spinning kind of slow. I like it. I like it more and more. Team belt. It's a serpentine belt. Yeah, what we're looking at. I love they're posting emojis in my window there so you can <laughs> see. That is a serpentine belt. <laughs> they're trying to get your attention. And I the, see you, chat. I see you. And they're doing well. So, so I love the fact that this is kind of... And then worst case, like we, we can do the same thing from the other side. If we really want the belt to like wrap around this, we can do another roller here, just like just on your like on your picture. So let's discuss the loop machine then. Should we also do just a belt to the loop machine? Loop the loop. Because that's very different, because that needs to be one to one, uh, the gear ratio. Which means we could just have so chat. All you smart people out there. Um, this connection. From here to here. It's a one to one weight. Oh my god, I got it. You know what a... F fundamental principle is in gear trains, Hannes? 
What? If you can lower the chain, lower the amount of gears in the chain. He's right over here. Yeah, we can see each other. I mean, I'm, I'm f- fried. <laughs> if you if you lower the length of the gear crane with the timing belt, we can drive the loop machine from the crankshaft. Here we go. Here we go. Right back into it. Ooh. So check this power transmission. Instead of going from here to here, one step, and from here, which has to be connected to here, two steps, we can just go one to eight gear ratio, a belt, another belt from the crank shaft immediately to the to the um, to the loop machine drum. Oh, wow! So say goodbye to this gear. And say goodbye to this gear. Tim Keller updated here and says, at that price, I could set up my own Hannes Man Meat Steakhouse and resale to the public. I'm going global here. <laughs> I'm going to be everywhere. <laughs> 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 and also a huge thanks to Selinski802. My girlfriend and I have missed you guys a lot. Glad to see you back working in this amazing project. Thank you very, very much. Glad to have you back here as well. That is wonderful. Thank you both. And so, wait, hang on. Because one to eight makes sense here. Let's make a new pulley. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm going to make a new sketch on this plane. Fredrik Johansson, I might have changed to Team Belt now. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see. So, and I think we can... Um, where's my CNC machine? It's not here. So, we also have to think uh, design for manufacturing. Have I closed it down? Yeah, I have. Um... Our rotary CNC machine will be able to manufacture all these uh, belt pulleys because that was m- one of my arguments when I was when I was not on team belts. I was like, "Yeah, where are you gonna get the pulley?" And if I can make one meter gears, I can make one meter belt pulleys, no problem. Um. And just the the sheer like ease of placement that it, it, it will allow us. Like we can just place the things where they are needed for the music instruments. Mm. So that is also like, so we're going to have a relationship one to eight here. So let's do 200. No, we want it 80. 80 divided by eight. Like, I couldn't do that in my head, you know. 800 divided by 8. Now a little bit bigger than. 1000 divided by 8. And then this becomes 1000. What a difference they make. 24 little hours. Do, do, do. James Gilliland. Simplicity is king. Take out those gears. <laughs> <laughs> Tessa Devote. What? I take the dog out for a walk and suddenly Martin is converted to Team Bell? <laughs> You snooze, you lose. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. I am actually excited about being on Team Belt. 
Team Gears were grinding my gears <laughs> for too long. Minus 20. New body. So, uh, sorry. There we go. I mean, I think this makes sense. But I don't see that this one, have I calculated this wrong? This is not eight times larger than this, is it? 125 times 8 is 1,000. Is it true? Okay. Oh, wait. Rotational direction. Here we go. There's always something. Which way do we want the loop machine? Are we lucky or are we not lucky? Which way do we want the loop machine to turn? Oh, I think we're lucky. I think this pans out because it's going to turn clockwise from here. And if we head over to our blocking sketch. Exactly. We want the loop machine to turn. Yes. We're <laughs> Murphy's law where everything turns to evil does not apply in this little case <laughs> and Neil Lamika sent a super chat here saying after donating to humanitarian aid in Ukraine I figured that I could use an extra cable for my chair and I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> Martin solved the chair for me here with an audio cable right that's fine <laughs> <laughs> Miss yelling into chat, close the door. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> Brilliant. Close the door. That was when you were in France, right? You never closed the door. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 oh, that's fantastic. And I'm over the moon by the fact that it... Because... The timing belts are not only removing parts, they're also fixing our rotational direction. If yes, exactly, because this is wait clockwise, anti clockwise, anti clockwise on the yes, we have the correct, and you know, like a pasta machine. So these rollers are gonna roll like it's going to. It's going to feel like it's feeding you pasta of music, like between the rolls, because they're going to roll like the same, uh, like this. So stuff is coming out of it. Okay, let me get this belt nailed into here. Offset 10. And we're going to do another of these turpentine tensioners, or what do you call them? Serpentine. Serpentine. Turpentine is some, Turpentine. <laughs> some kind of paint, right? Yeah. Don't use that on the machine, right? Highly flammable. Highly flammable turpentine. Offset. Tan. So I talked about it in yesterday that I heard a podcast about... Talked about the virtues, about not knowing how to make a project and often when you go into like a process like this you think you're open-minded and basically you have only three options option one is to do what you always did option two is to do um like something a little bit new but not really new and option three is some crazy idea that you heard of and that you are contemplating and it makes you think that you're open-minded, that you're even contemplating it, but you're actually never going to go for it. So basically, with that mindset, you're kind of stuck in. You're gonna end up doing almost what you all. You're gonna end up doing what you what you did before, basically. Mm. And since we're only in a digital model now, we can really throw anything on the table, 
like I'm also repeating like Lucas Wendel from Siegfried's Music Cabinet, the music machine m machine museum that will take uh, the two marble machines. So you can go and visit them in Rudesheim in Germany. And if you want to finish building them, why not? <laughs> you uh, seriously like I don't know. I can't promise what Lucas will offer. He's uh, like it, they are running the museum, so it will be in their hands. But I mean, if someone wants to like. I'm going to put all the spare parts and stuff with the machine as well. If someone wants to finish the Marble Machine X, you go try. Don't come to me crying about it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell you I warned you. But anyway, so I'm dreaming about having a concert in Lucas Museum with all three machines next to each other. Oh, imagine it. I want them to have like a cardboard cut out. Uh, next to the other two with just uh, silhouettes of the third machine with a big question mark on it. <laughs> just a black cardboard cutout. Minus 20. Look at our turpentine belt. Serpentine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hop, la, 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 la. <laughs> Timing belt and pulley system also allow for a quick gear ratio changes, which is also a big plus. Ah, that is very true. So, for example, if I, in the middle of the process, just, oh, like I miscalculated this, um, we just switch a pulley and all the positions can be intact. That's very true. New body. There we go. So let me look at it from, oh yeah, I don't have a pulley here. Let's make a little pulley, new body, boom. Hmm. Okay, this feels great actually. Chat is happy about Chat. seeing belts. Okay. <laughs> Team belt. It's like coolness factor. A little bit less cool, perhaps. Uh, but form from function. Yeah. But they're not... They, they are not silent, I just want to say. They are absolutely not silent. They're making... Yeah, I've heard it. Almost a more annoying sound than what, what a plywood gear is making. Charlie Foxtrot 25. To minimize parts, you should try to make a common belt tensioner. Instead of having half a dozen tensioners, you only have one big one. Um, how would that work <laughs> i mean for two for different belt or per belts you mean uh i don't know didn't really specify i also have this idea that belts are sucking a little bit energy out of the system like this adding this thing is adding friction even if it rotates it feels like it doesn't add friction I do think it's adding friction. Uh, now where there's friction, there's fire. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, everyone. Lucas Vandal. So it might be a race to a finished marble machine. Since you're dreaming of that concert here, should I go ahead and get you the size of our doors? <laughs> 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 Lucas Wendel, I've seen your doors. I'm sure there are um yeah. Give me the size of your doors, Lucas Wendel. <laughs> Lu Lucas Wendel, can we have the two uh, old machines next to each other in your museum? It's a question I have for you. Okay, let me go ahead and change the size of this flywheel because it's a little bit ridiculous right now. So where is that sketch? This one. Oh, 
Oh, look at this. This is not bad. Yeah, we're getting there. So why having gears at all then? I mean, we can have a belt in this connection as well. <laughs> then we have no gears. Just belt. It's gonna sound like a mosquito swarm attack. <laughs> To drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheers. 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 Cheers to you. No. Um, I think. So this is very, very like practical. Um in the sense that it's it frees up all the positions of the, the important positions the programming drum and the music loop thing and it turns everything in the correct rotational uh, direction so maybe the next like step would be to like find out if there's a, a silent belt That is my next. How much is that? Do we have like video of me? No, it doesn't matter. You can't tell anything from that. <laughs> Lucas Vandal follows up here. At some point likely to happen with the machines. We are debating on specific places, but first I think the marble machine needs a thorough cleaning and we can't finish MMX inside the museum. No grinding welding inside allowed. It's kind of fun to just put it there as the two, two prototypes and then wait for the third machine uh, to, to come in and be functional. So now when I'm seeing this, Here's what I'm thinking. If we have belts everywhere else, why do helical gears on only this connection? Just to have another technique? Um, and wait, wait. What are we talking about? <laughs> this is one to eight gear ratio, right? We have two 1 to 8 gear ratios. Oh my god, we can exclude this gear, everyone. This gives me hope for the future. Woo! What am I thinking right now? Look at this. Okay, this is awesome. This gear can be excluded. Here we go. We've been sitting the whole day like... I, I had a little bad feelings last stream because it felt like we were not getting anywhere. We were on this long staircase with long steps. We're moving forward. Mm -hmm. And here comes the true simplifications. Check this out, everyone. Thanks to the belt. Why didn't I see it until now? This pulley is going to be down here on this shaft. Oh, this is beautiful. Here we go. So we're using the loop machine. We're not that, we're, we don't have two instances with one to eight gear reduction. We have one and we use that. Uh, to drive uh, the programming wheel. Wonderful. Um, let me just get this down into the sketch as well. Uh, sketch is this. This sketch. This is cool. So team belts. I have to say I didn't believe in you first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hashtag Team Zero Gears is now appearing. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is this is kind of like, so I had, I had the idea to make helical plywood gears because I thought it was never done and I thought it was cool, 
First of all, we found a video today that someone already did it. Secondly, here you can see the belt tensioning in process. I want like I wanted to do it for for the wrong reason. So, am I thinking correctly now? Yes, I am. Mm, yes. Mr. Gonzonator, sometimes the best gear is no gear. <laughs> Gonzo, so nice to hear from you. Yeah, all True champion. All the true champions are returning. It's like, some. give me some epic movie reference, Hannes 3000. <laughs> you can't ask that of me this late on a Friday. <laughs> It's like the beginning of Hobbit 1. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is just turning up at the doorstep, ready for adventure. Those movies were a disappointment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Talk about simplifications, everyone. Now we just have to find out silent timing belts. Probably that's not too much of an ask. Let's see what's happening here. Of course, Sneaky Beef said it. Of course, it's like Avengers Endgame. Oh, thank you. I just see all the portals opening up here now. And all our heroes just appearing. Gonsonator just to your left, and there he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Michael M. Hannes needs more thinking oil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with coffee for today. Did you invent the name thinking oil? Yes. I never heard it before. I think so. I'm taking credit now. Did you invent it today? Yeah. Yeah, so see how much we have done today. <laughs> Mr. Gonsonator says, and my axe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing like a kid because you are laughing and I don't get the reference, but it's probably endgame. That's, that's Lord of the Rings, Martin. Ah, oh, of course. Give me. Here we go. When they're going to... Um, the council. To to Mordor. And Sneaky Beef. Hannes, you're Thor for sure. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but maybe not thank you if you're saying Avengers Endgame Thor. But I'll take it anyway. But honestly, look at this. Team Zero Gears. I mean, uh, okay, okay, I know what I did wrong. No, maybe I have to hide the sketch. I want to paint only this little circle yellow. Thank you. Okay. Everything is correct rotation. Everything has to correct gear drive. One belt to rule them all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, th it's three belts. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, it's three. Actually, it's three belts. <laughs> oh my God, Mr. Asarte. I have to... Check if there's an update with less assertiveness in the Hannes 3000. Ben, Ben, <laughs> Weber, Hannes, our rotation's not wrong now. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Uh, I want this one to start offset 20. Oh. What is this? Okay. 
Is this another one? So, let's check rotations. Clockwise, because I'm standing on the other side of the machine. Clockwise, which is exactly what we want for the loop machine. Mm -hmm. Oh. No. Barnstormer 322, the programming wheel will spin the other uh, way now. That's what the gears did. Always something. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Easy now. Chat is skating where the puck is going. Ah, oh, that was it. That was it. Oh, I missed that. There's always something. Hmm. We can cross the belt. So if we if we put the belt in a figure eight pattern somehow, it's not neat, but it would solve the issue. Hmm. Hmm. Such a shame. Right? Garrett Willem Smith. Whoop whoop. I just heard that I got my bachelor's degree. Congratulations to you. And is that degree perhaps in marble machine making so you can aid us here right now? Congratulations. Well, well done. <laughs> what was the degree actually? I don't know. I was so happy. Everything was so perfect. One Gear Gang is appearing now. One Gear, yeah, One Gear Gang is the returns. The hero, hero's journey of the One Gear Gang. Easily solvable, no crossing and no figure eight. Just yes, search belt reverse rotation. Robin J says. Okay, can you pull that up? Belt reverse rotation. No crossing. Belt reverse rotation. Uh, my brain broke immediately. What else is new? <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday here, like Rebecca Black says. <laughs> oh, is that song copy striked? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's shame, though. We should start with that. We should just bite the bullet and play that song every <laughs> Friday. Let's see what we have here. Then. We have images. Oh, like another, this is cool, but, uh, mm. wait, show, show me the picture on, on the, so we have reversal, show me the, is it on the top, output pulley, uh, Let's see what chat is talking about. Ah, two more pulleys. Don't cross and then belts. you get the pulley. Ah, oh, this is cool, chat. You are awesome. Skating where the puck is going. More sprockets, though. That. That's the one. The blue and red spin in opposite directions. Yeah. So basically, this allows you to. Put the belt on the other side of the of the driving input pulley, and a super cool, super cool solution. It's just I'm getting scared of the sound, and I'm getting scared of um, all the energy that is going to be eaten up by all these idle pulleys and the belt bending check, over. Check, uh, Jairo Cabello. Check the Excel file. You have an example of belt revert rotation without crossing there. Okay, I'll, I'll go there. It's probably the same idea. Um, so we're here. Um, belt ideas. Reload. Someone should back up this file because it's uh, also no. Wow. <clears throat> oh, look at this, Shane. I will switch over so people can see it. 
Wow, you you gone. Belt reverse rotation. Here's the idea. Um, Forty-five people in this Google Doc right now. I absolutely <laughs> love this audience. Thanks everyone for joining in the fun. This is really really helpful, and I keep saying this, but it was so frustrating in More Machine X because the machine in the studio did not allow me to listen to you uh, and to talk to you because a lot of the good ideas, a lot of the bad ideas, it was just I could just not think about them because the machine was already there. Now when we're doing this digitally. We can actually work on this. So, people are wondering why you need the two drums to go in two different directions. It's just um, so. Yeah, that's, we can go over to the iPad actually. Um, so I, I I sketched on this earlier today. So this is the old uh, programming wheel, and when it was going this direction, uh, let me, uh, <laughs> when I was going this direction, um, these registrators were pulled this way and that's how the marble was dropped. So if we revert the rotation of this programming wheel, our old design that actually worked flawlessly all the time has to be redesigned and we might be able to do that. Now I'm also getting emojis. <laughs> <laughs> Chat is on point. So this is this is cool. So instead of reverting down by the instead of reverting and this could also be tensioners in instead of reverting I uh, need teeth on both sides. Okay. So it's another kind of belt. Yeah, because it, it with a flat belt this would be no issue. And if you can show me, Hannes, the, the reversal that you had. Does that also need teeth on both sides? Yeah. That belt also need teeth on both sides. So is there belts with teeth on both sides? And then, if there is, if there is a tensioner, yeah. I'm getting a little worried about using a lot of that all these belts and tensioners and reversals will consume a lot of energy. Like crossing the belt, actually crossing the belt would give a good, I mean crossing the belt should could perhaps be an option. You just have to keep it. Hmm. Pit Fiddler, just drive the drum from a different shaft. You can make the ratio whatever you want. Yeah, so the idea... Yeah, we need one to 64. And this shaft is already geared down one eighth. Um, so... That means you're in the one gear gang because that would require <laughs> one gear gang. Here we go. <laughs> one gear gang. One gear gang. Oh, this was so close. This one was so close. Um We have a question here from Kanad Frump. What about braking? Inertia of the flywheel and all the masses on the timing belt. Will a distributed brake system have to be added acting simultaneously in several places for a coordinated slowdown? No, because these drums are rotating super slow. Okay. So there's no moment of inertia almost at all in them. So all, all the power in the whole machine is in this one flywheel. So we only need brakes on the flywheel. If the flywheel stops, everything else stops. And of course, we're going to like copy what we did on Martin X that we can um, break the connection to the flywheel for safety 
and then put a brake on the crank thing and everything will um, halt more or less immediately. If you had brakes on everything, it would halt even faster. Uh, so you're right about that, but I don't think it's 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 necessary. Okay, are we back to where is one gear gang? I didn't throw the gear. It's right. It's here somewhere. I mean, this gear is also beautiful here. <clears throat> Barn Stormer 322 Hannes, please look at the diagram in C54 spreadsheet. It shows how the programming wheel can rotate the other way and still keep the same registrator system. Let's pull that up and see That's what it's talking about. Ah, I did a little sketch here. Ah, nice. Nice. You get it? Um, of course I'm getting it. It's um, brilliance. It is. You reverted it very, very simply. Ah, not bad. Huh. He. So maybe. Yeah. Cool. These Gretzkis aren't skating where the puck is going. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Imagine we have a whole team of Gretzkis. I, That's uh, <laughs> can't get any better, right? No, it can't get any better. So that would what was just shown there would actually make one gear gang have to like leave walk over for this <laughs> hockey match. <laughs> um Of course, it's it would be higher. It's 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 still not optimal. Okay, we have two much better solutions than when, what we had in the in the beginning of the day. I can say that at least. Bit fiddler, yes, either all gear or all belt do not mix. Oh, is it just for for like OCD reasons or for any other reasons? Well, maybe yeah, no, learning one way to do this and just sticking to that. So we have the same same kind of parts, perhaps. If we mix, yeah. Mr. Gonsonator, more complex registrators times 40 ish or one extra gear. Yeah. Now I'm just staring blankly into the void. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. To be correct, it's uh, two extra gears, one extra shaft, one extra pulley. No, not one extra pulley. I, I was lying. But I wonder if crossing the if crossing the belt would be such a crime. Oh, since it's such such large distance, I'm I'm gonna cad the crossed belt. Um, crossed belt, you say? Let's see here. Someone sent me a little video here of a simple little yeah, nice belt drive right here. Yeah, simple as that, right? This is what I mean. We we just have to make sure that the belts when crossing are not like uh, crazily. Wait, are the teeth? It's not a Möbius strip, right? They they will end up. 
I have a I have a piece of tape here. James Drinkwater crossing a tension belt is going to wear it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but only if we allow it to. Um, only if we allow it to. I have, <laughs> uh, uh, only if uh, we allow it to scrub against itself. So I'm now crossing this piece of tape. And the glue stays on the inside. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I like the crossing is because it will also aid the reading of this small one. Oh, wait. Yeah, it should. Bit fiddler crossed belt still needs teeth on both sides. Question mark or no statement. <laughs> okay, so I need more tape to figure that out because I don't think that's true. Or is it? Wait, let's. Maybe I'm wrong. Spontaneously, I I thought like no. Man, Dracul, no, it has two sides. It's not a Mobius strip. Yeah, which should mean... Mr. Gonsonator offset the axis angle and the crossed belt will not touch. You could even have like a tensioner on both sides with flanges that lightly pull them apart. Perhaps. Lucas Vandal crossed belts can't be tensioned properly without it chewing itself up or requiring a lot of idler wheels. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm the crossed is not. Yeah, stuff to marinate on, right? Um, <laughs> a lot of marinating going on today. Yeah, a lot, a lot of marinating. Uh, it was so close. I was. You remember how happy I was, Hannes? Yeah, <laughs> we had we had a moment there. So the other thing, that's the reverse thing, but. So, so here's another question. Is there toothed timing belt with teeth on both sides? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have the feeling... Let's hear it, chat. I have the feeling um, not. Because if the belt is broad, crossing like a broad belt doesn't feel good. It, it, it just doesn't feel good. So then, maybe thinking about, so what if the programming pins, okay, I'm going to do some sketching. What if, um, plus new, here we go. What if, if we are on the top, if we go over to the iPad, 3000. What? What? I Oh, iPad. iPad. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading here. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. So, if the this is the programming pin and the programming wheel is going this way. So, can we instead of pulling, can we push it? Um There's the registrator. And it's just pushing, which is a, like a mechanical and much more difficult thing to do. So, so this is like the pusher and here's like the connection. And when it gets pushed, a note is played down here somehow. Like the pivot is here and it's just opening the gate. So um, here's the marble. 
So, and the marble falls down. Um, so then our beautiful muting, the way we muted it is that we're then just lifting this thing up. So this thing instead pushes on top of here. So this thing is lying in a track. This maybe should work. Let's see, we have something here. This could work. Here you have belt with teeth on both sides. Let's see if I can scroll down. Oh, they found it. I guess there is, right? Wow. Which would make the reversal possible. Which tells us that the belts are very versatile. And But I kind of like this. Uh, I'm going to try to reframe this. I kind of like this in a way because what's cool here is that we're never crossing. This is extremely simple. So, and I kind of always wanted the programming wheel to like go in the direction of the falling marbles. It's like, it feels a little bit like the music is going forward. So, yeah. We should not take for gospel what we did on the Marble Machine X. So... Until further notice, I think this is the solution. How do you feel, Hannes 3000? <laughs> <laughs> You're giving me all these difficult questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm... It's been such a big uh, journey for me today. Like, like uh, it's like challenging my own presumptions the whole day is so wonderful, but it's also like, oh, it's a lot to take in. So if we could just accept this direction, may maybe the maybe the triggering of the notes, maybe we'll find out that this will be much better. Um, somehow. Because we don't have to reverse the movement. Maybe this is just like more natural. Can you show me Rosero's Marble Gate just for uh, on, on YouTube? <clears throat> we have to do that one time per stream. Okay, <laughs> that's the rule. <laughs> and would this mean that both of the drums would go the same direction? Yes, right? Which also would look kind of nice, right? That two big... Um, Two big programming drums are like flowing forward anti-clockwise from audience perspective, creating music. Not bad. One drum eight times faster than the other. Let's see. So I, I just want to think about how this is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Let's make this pushing. Can you play it again? So 
depending on where we add the links. We have to cross the marble path with the... Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, that was kind of bad news, but... But hey. Yeah. Maybe we're done. We can just hang out. Is the machine done? I think the machine <laughs> is done. You mean for today? Yeah, I think I think like I reached um I think I reached a point now where I have to like marinate on all the new ideas. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what to attack right now. I don't want to waste people's time by sitting here and just being slow. Mm -hmm. Um because I, I I want to marinate on 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 all these ideas. Where where are we here? But I'm over the moon happy about the simplifications. There, this has been real simplifications today. We skipped the one sixteenth gear ratio of the loop machine. We skipped like a uh, hundred gears, and we allowed we made a design that will allow us to place these drums wherever we need to place them. So when we when we are going to add all the other instruments and get the vibraphone resonators in and all that jazz, this is uh, really versatile. So yeah. So I just I'm just happy. You're but, just happy? Yeah, I'm super happy. But I I don't know. Um I thought I was going to CAD the whole evening, but now I feel I, I need to like take a step away and and Look at it. Mm. I'm go. Yeah, I know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna make a page on our website, windgatam.net, which will be Marble Machine Three Documentation Central, um, and I will start to post CAD files there, so you can hack the CAD files and show us your versions on stream. And I'm also post links to um, all the written documentation. Um, so that's just kind of like an information central with, 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 with all the files. So I think I will put that up later tonight. Mm. Um, yeah. This was awesome. Wow. So we're wrapping up now. I, th I think so. Um, <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> it's Friday. It's Friday. It's been a fantastic first three days. Oh, I, it's been totally amazing. Yeah, it's been awesome. And um, we're going to do this now, uh, Monday to Friday, and some cheeky extra ones sometimes. And for people on other places uh, on the earth, we might do some evenings uh, from time to time as well. Mm. So, um, And we're aiming for Wednesdays on the main channel to do recapping. Yep. Um, well, I will press this button now. And we can thank everyone who has been watching. And we saw some super chats coming in. And that's so nice of you. I just want to acknowledge that. Oh, you're giving them a nice little extra solo here. Somebody wants to see the shirt. Let's see. Can you see it in there? Look. It is a thing of beauty. I highly recommend it. It's my, probably my favorite. A real motor, motorhead-ish kind of a t-shirt. Super metal. And uh, as you can see here, the new merch we have dropped. And you have all the beautiful downloads on the website. And we also now have a newsletter. Where we... When we have something new, cool to report or something like that. You will get an email. You don't have to worry that you will receive an email every other day. <laughs> No. So, to finish it off, just so happy to see all the heroes are returning. Yes. Uh, and um, Documentation Central. I think really we can work on this machine together in a new way when we don't have the physical Marble Machine X holding us back, dragging us down. Team Belt, everyone. <laughs> it's weekend. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Hannes3000, I love you. I love you too, man. Fantastic. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We'll be back sooner than you think. Yeah, take care. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye.